In these videos, we're going to cover importing some artwork into Bobcad using BobArt. We're going to use BobArt to do some embossing, to uh, do some 3D reliefs, and to work around with the artwork that we're importing and vectorizing. And we're going to explore the tool paths to get this all carved into wood in a, an efficient and effective manner. All right, to begin with, we're going to use BobArt to bring some images in. So we click on the BobArt tab in the Datacam Tree Manager. Left click on the BobArt Manager and click Load Image. Uh, BobArt can load many, many different image types. Most commonly, you're going to be working with JPEGs, GIFs, occasionally BMPs or bump maps. Uh, this is an oval border. I had it toggled off. The I key defaults to toggle on and off these images. All right, we have this brought into Bobcad. This is a very nice piece to work with as far as vectorizing. You'll also notice that it's loaded under images here in the Data Cam Tree Manager or the Bobart tab. If I left click on this and click on Vectorize, I get a bunch of options. Um, we're going to ignore the multicolor strategy. This is a black and white. That's all I'm working with right now. Uh, black and white is simpler to use. It, uh, in some instances, it's just going to work better. In other instances, it won't do what you need to do, and you have to work with multicolor. Your first control that you're going to get is basically a, just a slider. Uh, at the high end, it picks up everything that it can see, including, you know. Um, a little bit of grain, a little bit of discoloration around the image uh, probably goes back to when it was originally drawn. If you work it down to the other end, it starts to fade out to the point where these black and white lines are starting to gray. Well, what I want for this is just about the maximum line thickness I can get without picking up any noise around it. And a value of around 240 is going to work pretty well for that. So that's got me set up there. Bypassing the multicolor strategies, we go down to the bottom. We've got two windows, vectorize parameters and image size. We'll look at image size first because I uh, just want to go ahead and get that out of the way. It's very simple. You've got an X and Y size. And you've got a checkbox for keep aspect ratio. All right, in this case, I want this image to wind up in a about a seven and a quarter inch high format. So I put in 7.25. I don't have to worry about the X size because I've got keep aspect ratio checkbox on and uh, this will just change automatically. Above it, you've got the vectorized parameters. You've got uh, three things to look at in there. There's accuracy, which is how much of each individual pixel gets used to basically calculate the vectors. Uh, it starts off with 0 0.8 pixels and it, little strange sounding, but you can use a, more than one pixel. So 1.2 pixels, 1.5 pixels, 2.6 pixels are all valid in this too. Uh, you've got remove chains less than X number of pixels and the default is 10. This is to get rid of things like that grain and speckling that you saw when I had it pushed up very high. Uh, that would get rid of anything smaller than 10 pixels in, in a single chain. In this case, there's literally nothing for it to do. It's a very clean image. Uh, uh, so 10 is fine there. Because this has a lot of curves in it, I've got keep arcs checked, or with arcs checked. Um, sometimes you'll run across an image that arcs don't matter so much, just straight lines are fine, and that'll be uh, what you want to do. So you'd uncheck this. In this case, I want it checked. Accuracy is the part that you're going to get the most bang out of playing with. I'm uh, going to just use the default here. Everything else is set the way I want it, and tell it OK. And I want to push in and have a look at what it's given us and show why I don't want to use that value. Now, as we're pushing in here, this is only going to wind up being about an inch wide. So I'm getting very, very small here. But it matters. Uh, in, in these machines, the tool is actually being pushed up or down, in and out, in accordance with these tiny little scallops that you see. There are lots of them. They're all over the place. And they're needless. Um, you know, what you're seeing here is it saw one pixel missing on the edge of this line and it said, oh, that must be a scallop. And I'm set to use arcs, so I'll throw an arc in there. It's doing what you told it to do, basically, but the instructions were just not all that great for this case. So I'm going to use a uh, pick box and delete that. I'm going to go back to my image up here. I click vectorize again. It's kept all my values, but I want to up the value here. 
Uh, I want to use actually about a 1.2 or a 1.3 on this image. I know from experience, I'm going to use 1.3 because I played with it before this demo. I'm going to click OK. And now let's push in and have a look at what we've got. I'm also going to blank that image because it's getting in the way. In this case, you'll notice that all those little arcs that you saw everywhere are gone which is great because you don't have to clean up all those little arcs. There's still cleanup to do. There's always going to be cleanup to do. You can see that I've got these nice little uh, indents here and then I come up and I've got this big old arc that I want to change to look more like these. I've got a uh, toolbar set up over here called cleanup that I use specifically for this sort of work. I do a lot of this sort of work. The main tools in it, the ones that I use the most, are Deform Contour, Drag Corner, and Line Join. Deform Contour does things like take this arc, let me just click it, and I can drag that arc around to be anything from a straight line to an almost a circle. Click it and it's done. Drag Corner, I can grab any vertex and put them where I need them. In this case, I'll go back to deform contour, put a little bit of arc there, put a little bit of arc there, that was a little too much, and that's almost completely cleaned up. I'm actually going to take a little more off of that one. And then I'll move along looking for the next glaring problem. There aren't really all that many in this case. It's a very good drawing to start with and the cleanup will only take a couple of minutes which is great. Uh, I've taken images a patch of reeds for instance and spent hour after hour after hour cleaning up that image. Uh, sometimes you can eliminate most of your cleanup using the accuracy. Sometimes you cannot. Alright. A couple of things I want to do to this. I'm going to use translate and drag just to move it off of the uh, the X and Y datum lines. Click OK. And I want to move about a quarter inch or so off there. Like that. And hit cancel. One other thing that I want to do and this is to give this piece more visual impact. Uh, when I v-carve this, and it's going to be a v-carve piece, all these little alleys are going to get run through with the V-Tool. It's going to move in between and amongst and around all the other geometries. And it's going to give me basically a line drawing very similar to what you see here. But I can give it a lot more visual impact if I go through, click select, hold down the shift key for chain, and start picking these little islands so that I can get rid of them. Trash those. Now it's going to come and do the little line on the outline. It's going to do a line in between all these interlace points where a piece you know, doesn't actually go underneath but is, is visually going underneath another one. But in between it's going to carve in deep, give me a nice shadow reveal and just be a much more visually striking piece. And that's going to be about all for this video. In the next videos, I'm going to import a, uh, or not import, I'm going to draw an ellipse on the inside of this that's going to be the geometry that's used by Bob Art to dish out the inside of this oval. And then we're going to put a piece inside of that, raise it back up to the Z level so that we can do a V-carve design on a piece in the middle that's raised up in this dish. Then we do the V-carve design on the outside. And it's all going to wind up looking pretty good and very Irish. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next video.